Hey, it's Ryan Moody here, helping you to fish smarter, not harder. In this week's blog post, we're going to uh, show you how a professional sharpens a knife. Um, and no one better than that than our local butcher, Callan. And uh, Callan knows how to handle his meat, that's for sure, everyone knows that. So, uh, mate, can you um, give us a few tips on how you sharpen your knives? Yeah, hey Ryan, fantastic. Nice to be here today, guys. Um, you don't need too much fancy equipment, just a nice, dirty base to start off with. Okay, mate, so um, you've added the soapy water to your stone? Yeah, that's right. Uh, just to create, these are oil stones, these are. We yep. don't use oil on them. You no. can buy them from a BCF or I have a look around, maybe off the internet um, or a local store to buy these stones, oil stones. We use this soapy water. Just helps lubricate a lot better than mm -hmm. the oil does. Yep. It doesn't clog it up. Cool. We're going to start at the back of the knife and work all the way to the front of the knife. And that's the biggest thing. And keeping a 40 degree, 30 degree angle on it and just being consistent the whole way through filling it in, like sharpening the knife, keeping that angle. We don't, we're aiming for a nice point on the end of the knife. We're not aiming one side up and one side point down. down. Yep. And that's where people do go wrong, not keeping that consistent both sides yep. level. So we'll start off here. So it's very important that you do your strokes so many one way and then so many That's the other? Right. Yeah, just five either way, just to work that knife down. Yeah. Um, and work from the back of the knife all the way to the point. Mm -hmm. And as it's curved, it's a nice short knife. We're not using any big knives. It's just you can get in around the bones, make the fish fill it in. A lot yeah, easier. Yeah, a lot easier. Yeah. So, um, and there's a curl on the end here. So when we do finish it up, we're just lifting the knife up a little bit mm -hmm. just to follow that curl around. Okay, so cool. We'll start off here. Sure, mate. Just nice, long, even strokes. So starting from the back of the knife all the way to the top. Yep. We're always working away from ourselves too. We're not working towards ourselves. So we're going to cut ourselves. For obvious reasons, yeah. yeah. We're applying a fair bit of pressure, but not too much pressure. Yep. So um, we don't want to be rip tearing the knife apart or anything else. No. So just... And I guess it's also important to use those short swept back knives because one mistake I see people do is they get the long, they buy a long skinning knife thinking it's a fillet knife from the tackle shop and they try to fill it with that long thin yeah. blade and it's just no it good. No, it's no. a nice hard sturdy knife. When um, skinning the fish, those longer knives aren't too bad for the taking the skin off. Yep. But when you're getting in around those bones, you want a nice strong hard knife like, to do it. Especially for fish like threadfin, they have those nodules and everything you've got to get around. Around and, them, yeah, that's a big issue. Yeah, there, cool. So. So mate, yeah, you've done that uh, on that same angle a few times either side. We probably and do that probably 10, 15 times a yep. side. Okay. And just at, towards the end, you get a little bit lighter, yep. back off a bit, yep. and then even just work it down to two, two times either side. So once, twice, once, once twice. twice. Yep. And then you just bring it right back down mm -hmm. from five times down to one or two times. Yep. Knife does a lot, the point of the knife does a lot more work than the back of the knife. Okay. So it's going to get worn down a lot, a lot quicker. Yep. So sometimes you can just push the knife a little bit and just work the front of that knife too. As well. Just to help, yeah, sharpen. Because, like, yeah, well, you're, you're right, actually, because that takes all the bones and everything at the end when people come through around the rib cage and that, it does, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, you got a The end of the knife. So we'll just clean this knife here. And throughout the whole time, we're cleaning the knife using plenty of soapy, soapy water. When you come to stealing a knife, same thing. We're not whack. People just smash them sometimes. Soft, yeah. Just nice and gentle. Nice and soft. And same thing. In that same 40, 30, 40 degree angle. The angle. It, it's, not, it's not around that... Uh, degrees is fine. Yeah. It just, uh, and you want to carry that through mm. onto the steel when you've been finishing with a knife. Yeah. So I don't know if you can see this here. We're about this here, angle here, and we've got exactly the same on the other side too. And that's the biggest thing. Three or four times either side, and that's it. So it's just a nice little touch on the on the steel at the end, that's and it. nice and sharp. That's off it. you go. Lovely. Off we go. Cool. Now the biggest thing now too, another step with the stones is after we do that three or four times, yep. it's going to get big shoulders on the knife. And oh, this is, I see. The further you get up the, the, the top of the knife. Yeah, oh, I see. Uh, and that's what, after a new knife, are perfect. But once yep. you get a year into the knife, mm -hmm. it won't hold its edge. So even though you're sharpening it, a couple of days later, or a few uh, fish later, mm. the knife's blunt again. Again, yeah. So this is when it comes to having big shoulders on the knife, yep. and it's worn out like this. So we can put on the heavy side, the coarse side yes. of the water stone. We should explain that before better. There's two sides of the stone. Mm -hmm. The soft, fine side and a big coarse, heavy coarse side. side. Mm -hmm. So we're going to flip that knife over onto the coarse side and really now we're going to work hard. Yep. We're going to knock it back. So from the front to the back, it's just one, one level. I and see. Knock those shoulders off that, off that knife. Okay. Turn it over and do the same on the other side. Yep. And this normally takes a few minutes. Of yeah, work for sure. Done. Wow, I didn't know that actually. That's one trick I didn't. Uh, I never knew. I always use the knives right down to uh, 
to when they finish, basically. <laughs> now, this is, isn't at the 30 to 40 degree angle we talked about before. This is probably only about 10 or... Yeah, because you're, what you're doing is thinning up the blade because yeah, it it's getting too thick. Yeah, and then, yeah. And then we'll turn it over and re put a new angle on, angle the, on it again. On the knife. Just trying to get back to the original start that we started off with. Okay. Same thing, working from the front of the knife all the way down to the, the back, just get that consistent angle the whole way through. Yep. And then when, once you've got that nice angle again, you turn him over and put him on the, the smooth side. Right. And yeah, so we'll just have a quick look at that. Yeah. That's awesome. Gee, you can even teach an old dog like me a few <laughs> new tricks, hey? That's a little bit of work to go still, but you can see where we're trying to get to. Yes. With that side yeah. all the way down flat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we put it onto the smooth side again. Yep. And we keep it on that 10 degree angle that we had. Yep. It's pretty coarse at the moment, that knife. Yep. We're just going to polish that side up back to a smooth surface. And I guess that, uh, by well, having it polished, it sort of runs through the fillet, the meat a lot easier. A lot nicer, yeah. That's Doesn't correct. grab it, yeah. This normally takes a few minutes too, just to get the side nice and smooth again. Okay, you can see that polished side? Oh, yeah, it's definitely knocked right edge right off it. Yeah, and now we're going to bring it back up to that 30, 40%. Yep. And do the same thing, start with 5 in the side, yep. and work our way down to 1 or 2 either side, yep. until we're happy with the knife. Cool. So this works down a little bit more. Give it a nice clean. And just a few light polishes on the steel. Steel, yep. You don't need expensive gear, like it all works, so whatever you've got, your local store. Yep. Yes, it's good. Cool, excellent. And what type of um, steel is that one, mate? Is that's a, a butchering F dick. Yeah. They come in all shapes and sizes. sizes. You want a pretty fine, that's had a bit of work on it. Yeah. But a really fine stone, uh, steel is the best. Yeah, so. Awesome, mate. Okay, this time we're going to show you on a diagram uh, of what we've just spoken about regards the shoulder of the knife. So Callum, um, start off again mate, just show us uh, from brand new down to an old knife. This is a new knife and it's got a lovely nice point on it, nice yep. fine edge at the front. After you work it down and sharpen it three or four times, mm -hmm. you're going to lose that nice point on point. it and you're going to bring it right back down as we show in this middle picture. Mm -hmm. So it, to do that, we put turn the stone over, mm -hmm. like the core side again, yep. we work these big shoulders off the knife, mm -hmm. and we're trying to, we're working on the, the top of the knife, the, uh, the point of it, the blade, mm -hmm. that's what we talk about in this picture here. So uh, along here, you get these massive big shoulders, and we're going to put it on the core side and work it down mm -hmm. to get it back to this point here. Point again, and that's in the last diagram that's, over here. Yeah, that's right, and that's where, you can see these parts we've marked here, yep. that's what we want to get rid of. After we've done that, we turn the stone over again, back on this uh, nice smooth side, mm -hmm. and then we start again with our five either side, either side to put a nice edge cool. on the knife. Thanks for having us down, and I'm going to let you go and play with your sausage again. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks <Brian>. mate. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers, buddy. So, whether you're coming to carbal fishing or you're going through to the Cape, call in and see Callum. It's on the main drag here in Victoria Street, just down from the jetty. And I tell you what, there is not another scenic butchery anywhere in the country. We're look, overlooking the beautiful Hinchinbrook Island here. And of course, we've got Barramundi and large crocodiles swimming up and down the beachfront. So, get on in, see the Callum. He can uh, cry back your meat if you're going away for you or camping. He's a fantastic butcher, but he's a terrible fisherman, so don't follow him around the channel. So, if you like this little tip and you'd like to see more, Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and if you only want some special tips I send out by email only, head on over to www.ryanmidifishing.com and sign up for free email updates. Until next time, get out on the water, keep fishing smarter, and we'll see you then.